Right then, everyone, Celtics players and staff and lucky supporters, I'm not jealous at all, I promise, have travelled from Scotland over to Australia, Sydney, to be exact, where we will face a couple of matches over the next five, six days or so. Um, but we're not chatting about all of that today. We're going to go in depth on that tomorrow, do a bit of a roundup for you as well, because today I want to talk financials. Yes, once again, we are leaning on the utter legends at Swiss Ramble for today's video. They have done uh, all of the hard work here and I'm simply coming along and relaying the information to you. Uh, yesterday, they released one of their lengthy deep dive Twitter threads that they're kind of famous for where they look at uh, you know, either a club or a league or an organisation. And it just so happened that yesterday, Celtic were the focus. So I felt we could kind of work through what was said in that very lengthy Twitter thread. I could offer some opinion as well, and we could all get an overall picture of where Celtic sit financially. It's actually just over a year since we last did this kind of video. A year ago, Celtic's uh, figures weren't nearly as impressive. COVID played a big part in that. Obviously, Ange had only been at the club for a couple of months as well. Um, you could argue even at this stage that the figures aren't fully reflective of the good work that Ange has done, uh, given that the Champions League money isn't included, for example. So we'll get into all of this stuff. Uh, I would urge you to check out the Swiss Ramble thread for yourself. I have linked it in the description. They've done all of the hard work. I'm just relaying the information to you. By the way, some of this stuff you will know, other bits you won't know. Uh, so we'll just crack on with it. I'll pop over here. Hi everyone, and uh, we'll take it away. In fact, before we get on to our first slide, um, just a wee shout out for you to go and subscribe to the channel uh, as we go for 34,000 subscribers. Now, you know by now, I just need to get that in. If you're watching and you're not subscribed, go on, subscribe. You know you want to. First screen here is an overview of Celtic's annual results for the year ended June the 30th, 2022. These were released by the club you may remember uh, about, what, just shy of two months ago, September the 20th, uh, and they are in comparison to the year before um, in this graphic. So main takeaways here are that we made a 6.1 million pre-tax profit. That was following a 11.5 million loss the previous year, so that's obviously good news. Money from player sales was up by £20 million, good news, and money from ticketing was also up a lot too given that we're kind of we're coming out the far end of the pandemic, thankfully. This is how our profit actually compares to, uh, let's just say, selected clubs around Europe. And as you can see, actually being able to disclose a profit at this point is a pretty rare thing. You look at some of the losses there at the bottom, astronomical losses, some would say, um, and Celtic are, are obviously on the good end of that, a six million profit. Um, so good news there as far as we're concerned. And as you can see, we often post profits with 2020 and 2021, obviously affected by COVID. The only other loss on top of 21 was back in 2015 when things were nowhere near as healthy at the club. So we do have a, a real... Uh, tendency to post profits, especially in Champions League years. A reminder that these figures we're talking about here don't actually include the Champions League, but we'll go into that a wee bit later on. A big part of these profits uh, is the money we make from selling players. That hit a high over the past year, thanks to the likes of Odson Edward, Christopher Ayer and Ryan Christie. You can expect that figure there on the right, 29 million to be broken in years to come if Ange gets his wish of uh, a high player turnover. Ange has already said that, that he reckons that as fans we may get attached to players, but we shouldn't get too attached because players may be moved on. And it seems like that is his plan, a kind of continual uh, growth of the team, growth of the squad, dynamic Agile are all words that he's used. I reckon we'll see that £29 million bettered uh, in coming years if Ange gets his wish of moving players on. And hopefully we just reinvest the money well to keep the squad um, you know, constantly improving. 
uh, and, and obviously selling players at the right time is really important in that. In terms of our record player sales, in fact, I'm just seeing this is for the last 12 years. The top four there, all highlighted in green, have all happened in recent years. And I think it's fair to say we've got a number of players in this current squad that could go for, you know, decent figures uh, and could certainly, you know, fetch us eight figures or or more. Um, that's 10 million or more, Stephen Gerrard, by the way. And for as much as we're kind of, I think we're spoken about as being the kind of model club in terms of Scotland for selling players at the right time and bringing in money, you don't have to sell a player for huge money to get quite high in that list. I mean, Stuart Armstrong went for 7 million and he's the 10th, you know, highest sale in the last 12 years. Um, obviously, the higher you go up, like Satirney have gone for 24 million. Is there anyone in this current squad we could sell for for more than that? I mean, I, I think if Shota continues his rise, you know, Real Hatati can find a way to really perform at Champions League level. Those guys could easily go for for you know 20 25 possibly even 30 million given that the the market is always growing uh yeah moving on a wee bit changing tack an interesting illustration this is of the battle celtic face against teams down south and i'm not even talking about the top teams i'm talking about norwich city the team who finished 20th uh, aka bottom in the premier league last season and this just gives a wee indication of the battle Celtic are facing. So as you can see at the top there, match day, we bring in £43 million. Pounds. Uh, Norwich, only £11 million. If you jump down, obviously, we're in Europe, they're not, so we're bringing in money that they're not. Commercial, again, even though they're playing in the kind of most lucrative league in the world, um, we're still bringing in you know substantially more money than them commercially. But it's that second one there, the TV deal, that just highlights the as I say, the battle that Celtic are facing, the money over £100 million brought in by Norwich City for finishing bottom in the Premier League and Celtic only get around £4 million for winning the Scottish Premiership. Uh, so that is uh, it in a nutshell right there. And I thought it was quite interesting to actually see that because you hear people talking about uh, the, the disparity, but it's interesting to actually see it there. And that is why Europe and the Champions League in particular is so important for Celtic because that's where we can make money. I mean, we're not going to make £100 million unless we like go and win the Champions League, but we can bridge the gap slightly. And this is the money we've made from Europe over the last, what, 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. Green there is Champions League, red is Europa League, and blue, which is only applicable to that tiny wee bit on the, the most recent entry, is the Conference League. And straight away you see the huge difference that playing in the Champions League makes. It earns us so much money. Uh, the chat this year, and we covered this on a, a recent video, is that we received around 29 million euro or 25 million pounds roughly from UEFA this season for playing in the Champions League. A big part of that was the 9.1 million euro coefficient payment. We've touched on this uh, a wee bit on the channel and this is how we got that and this is also what other teams got. I felt it was important to include this just to give you all an idea of how it works. So you've got Real Madrid at the top there taking away 36.4 million uh, euro because they have the highest coefficient over the last 10 years. Celtic ranked, what is that? Uh, I think that's like 24th, is it? 24th or 25th, and we took home 9.1 million. So again, if you can just improve our performance slightly and rise up those standings a wee bit, and we're in the Champions League every year, you know, you could be taking home more and more money as time goes on. So just wanted to include that. The good news once again, and Swiss Ramble touches on this, is that if we win the league this season, and let's face it, it's looking rather good at this stage, we'll be back in the Champions League group stage next season. No qualifiers to play. We should also be good for the following season should we continue to win the Scottish Premiership. Remember, we've got next season in Europe and then the year after that, the new Champions League format will be coming in and that should actually aid Celtic as well as we've touched on in the past. Moving on to off-the-pitch matters. This uh, thread also mentions the Adidas deal that Celtic have in place. That's reportedly worth between 5 and £6 million per year. 
That's going to run until the summer of 2025. The same goes for our Dafabet sponsorship as well. So they've still got a good few years to run. Our yearly wage bill was 58.9 million euro. That's just shy of our record high in 2018. Really not much in it at all. In fact, I'm thinking I have no real evidence for this. Um, but you would assume that we're almost certainly now paying more uh, money out in terms of wages every week than we ever have in our history, just based on the fact that we only really lost uh, near beat on Tom Rogic and Bolly Bolingoli from the wage bill in the summer. I know a few players went out on loan as well. Um, in terms of you know fully losing them from the wage bill, it was only really those three that went. And we did sign a number of players who I think will be on decent enough wages. I think someone like Aaron Moy would be on a decent enough wage given his pedigree. Um, so I reckon we're probably paying uh, the highest wages we ever have in our history. But that's not a bad thing so long as the results on the pitch are coming, so long as we have Champions League football and as so long as these players have a good transfer value. And I think you can say the answer to all three of those is a resounding yes. So that's all good. I'm more than happy for Celtic to pay a wee bit more in wages if it's going to give us the results on the pitch and, you know, get better players to the club. Talking about a transfer spend, that was comfortably the highest it's ever been with gems like O'Reilly, uh, Hatate, Kyogo, Yakimakis, Juranovic and more all costing money. Now, Jota and Carter Vickers deals are also included in this as they happened before the end of June uh, as, as I think Bernabe was the other one. The main thing here is that Celtic are spending within our limits. We bring in money from sales to fund uh, these transfers. The conclusion from Swiss Rambo that I should read out here is Celtic are in good shape financially despite the pandemic thanks to their sustainable approach though this owes a lot to their player trading model. Champions League qualification is also important so the expanded format should help future prospects. I think at this stage we all kind of know the blueprint for success. It's not rocket science. Get into the Champions League every season, earn that money, perform well, better than we did this season, sell players at the right time and replace them well and you can't really go wrong. The good thing here for supporters is that we don't really have to concern ourselves too much with the financials. Yes, it's interesting to, to do videos like this and look at this kind of stuff, but quite simply, if the expectations are being met on the pitch and the team is playing well but more importantly uh, getting results and that means you know winning the league and qualifying for the Champions League then all of this will fall into place you know valuations will go up we'll get more money when we sell players and if we replace them well which I think we all have complete faith in Ange to do um, this is a uh, this is a good place Celtic are in right now uh, I think selling players at the right time is a good plan as well. I don't need to go back into a certain season recently that we'd all like to forget when we held on to players for at least one year too long and performances seemed to suffer as a result, both individually and collectively. I think Ange has the plan um, to just kind of continually have this squad ticking over. You know, players I think are going to leave in the summer. Don't know who exactly. Uh, and I think they'll be replaced. And as I say, we have full faith in Ange to replace them well. So um, I did have a wee daft pun to to see us out here. Am I going to go for it? Aye, why not? Yeah. The future is bright. The future is green and white. See you tomorrow.